Yo, Elliot, how involved should I be in parenting my daughter? She's nine years old. Sometimes I'm always the one enforcing the rules, keeping the rest of the family on time. School time, bedtime, clean this up, pick that up. A lot of the time I feel as though my intervention is unwelcome even from my wife. That she, should, she would rather not be so strict with the timing of bedtime or that she would rather I had let certain things slide. How much energy should I put into enforcing the rule set that I only seem to believe in? Do I lean it out harder and express my concerns or do I back off and focus my energy elsewhere? This is a great question. And in fact, what you got to do is you have to speak with your manager. So when you work for a corporation and the family is a middle, a mini corporation or better yet a mini church, but let's use the corporate secular idea because I think it will resonate with people. When you work for a company, the CEO doesn't come and, uh, and, and tell the employees what to do. The CEO is busy planning and plotting for the future of the company, making sure that everything is running smoothly, that the people are protected and well cared for, and that the revenue's coming in, and he's looking at the numbers. He's up here. That's what the CEO is doing. The CEO, if he notices, oh boy, the employees are, what, they're getting a little out of hand. I noticed that, you know, this guy is coming in late, that person is uh, staying in the bathroom too long, they're chatting on the phone. The employee, the, the CEO doesn't go to the employees. In a right or, rightly ordered organization, the CEO reports or speaks to his manager or operations manager, COO, and says, calls his operations manager into the office and says, hey, uh, hey manager, come on in here. I want to have a talk with you. I noticed that a lot of the employees are coming in late and things are going wrong. Um, it, it, in order for this to run smoothly, in order for our company to be profitable, uh, we're going to need them to come on in on time and do things a little bit better. How can I help you to make sure that this happens? And if the, and if this, and you know, maybe, maybe they have that type of relationship where the manager's like, well, you know, the guys, it's okay that they're coming in late because they're still getting the work done. And so I really don't pressure them too much. And so maybe, maybe the CEO listens to the manager and is like, okay, yeah, well, they're getting the work done. You're right. And it's not such a big deal that they come in late. All right, well, carry on. Just report back to me and just, you know, show me the numbers and make sure that things are going well. Okay, good. Goodbye. That's a, great, that's a great conversation between the CEO and the manager. You're the CEO of your family. You're the king of your family. You're the CEO. Your wife is the manager, right? This is, the, this is every organization has a hierarchy. There must be. This whole idea of egalitarianism and everything's democratic don't work, right? You know how you know it doesn't work? That's why they got immigrants, illegal immigrants flooding the border and saying that they should be able to vote. There should be a hierarchy in the country where people who are legitimate, that's like somebody coming in to my family from outside and they get a vote now too, right? That's the kind of democracy that we've been, we're being taught is the right way. And we've been taught this for a very long time. It don't work that way. There's people who have the most responsibility here and they got the most authority here. The person with the most authority has the most responsibility. The person with the most responsibility has the most authority. The man always has the most responsibility. No question about it. Because when Ish hit the fan, the first thing they're going to ask is, where's your father? Where's your husband? Nowadays, they don't so much anymore because we're, we're, we've been disposed of. But traditionally, and the right way is to, is to look for the husband. Where's your husband, right? Always speak to the father, always speak to the husband. He's the CEO. One of my daughters was having a problem with one of her friends the other day. And uh, my wife, she came to me and my wife was saying, this is what's going on. And so, and this is, you know, I've had this happen with multiple, multiple of my children. When things like that happen, I don't let my wife have to go deal with it. I call the church person's father. This is when like the presidents have to get involved, right? You, if, if, if Biden is going to go de have dealings with Russia, it's Biden and Putin, right? Imagine Biden sends uh, uh, Kamala Harris <laughs> to go deal with Putin. Putin probably kick her out. 
what is this? Who is this woman? Get her out of here, right? You're the president. You're the CEO. And so with that, you got to get, you got to get online with your wife. Y'all need to talk. You need to have a conversation with her. You got to explain to her what your vision is. And this is key. Before ever trying to delegate or demonstrate or try to try to make things happen, just like the CEO, a CEO ain't going to get his managers to comply and the managers can't get the employees to comply if the CEO don't have a vision. The CEO has to have a very clear vision for what we are and where we're going. And you need to relay that to your wife in a very, in a, in a very plain way. I, do, I did this with my kids, the other, my whole family the other day because I had a renewed vision, not a renewed vision that has been growing, but there's some things as my children are getting older, I have to start verbalizing and say, this is, this is, this is where we're going and what we're doing and why I ask you the, to do these things because I'll get in some resistance from my, from my children about certain things. And so I was like, okay, stop. We need to have a meeting. Of course, I meet with my wife first. I say, hey, this is, you know, this is what's coming up and this is where we're going and you know, I want to make sure that we're all on the same page. Of course, she's always on the same page with me because I have their best interest in mind. Sometimes she might not understand right away or she might not agree right away, but we work it out. She and I work it out. And then to the children, okay, children, there's going to be some new things going on here. This is why. Over the next three to five years, you're going to be this age, this age, and that age, and you're going to be expected to do such and such, and, and so on and so forth, and we're, as your parents, doing the best that we can to prepare you for this next stage in your life. Thus, we are now asking you to do X, Y, Z. Treat your family like a business, bro. That's, what, that's my advice to you. Don't go around trying to enforce rules with your kids. I don't enforce rules with my kids. I don't. My wife enforces the rules with the kids. I make the rules. You know what makes someone a ruler? The person that makes the rules. Not the person who enforces the rules. That's the, that's the commander. My wife is the commander. I call her that sometimes. She's a commander, right? Because when you do the personality test, <laughs> she comes out as, I don't remember what the letters are, but she's a commander. I was like, well, that's right. She's a commander. What does a commander do? The commander commands. But you know what I come out as? I forget what they call it, but it's the CEO. I have, a C I have the entrepreneur. That's what I am, the entrepreneur. Entrepreneur is usually CEO. Not always, right? But the entrepreneur is the big picture person. So as the big picture person, I go to my commander. and say, hey, commander, here's where we're going. Here's what we're doing. Let's see how that, how that works out for you. You need to go to your wife. All this stuff about bedtime, uh, cleanup time, picking stuff up, you got to talk to her about it. And if you can't get her on the same page as you, well, then you got bigger problems. And you should have done what I'm telling these men to do right now, which is you choose your wife based on a corporate mindset. You don't marry your wife because she has big boobs. That's a dumb idea. You don't marry your wife because you have great sex with her. That's a dumb idea. All the main reasons why, or you, here's another one, which is usually the trap. You don't marry a woman, well, I said it already, but you're addicted to her sex. That's what usually happens. Most guys, they, they can't see this woman because they're addicted to her sex. So you are already in a situation. Hopefully you chose a woman that would make a good wife. But if not, now you got a little bit of backtracking and work to do. And you got to talk to her about what her role is, what mainly, number one, what your vision is, what her role in that vision is, and what your expectations are. Right. Any good any good parent, father and mother would say bedtime is a good idea. It's good for the children's mind. It's good for their health. It's good for their body. It's good for their soul. It's good for having boundaries. Cleaning stuff up is a good idea for a family because a messy house leads to a messy mind. I don't want my children to have a messy mind. I don't want them to feel it because children sense chaos. I don't want my children to sense chaos in my home. My wife's sister is the complete opposite of her. Her kids have no bedtime. The house is often a mess. 
They talk back. They do whatever they want. They're all over the place. Those kids, they're anxious because it's chaos in their house. My house, orderly, orderly. And you know something? Check this out. I ain't orderly. You look around my office. I'll show you guys around my office one of these days. I got stacks of books all over the place. I have not organized my books yet. That's been my main thing since I moved here. I haven't done. All right? My wife comes in here and she cringes. But she's orderly because I need her to be orderly because she's managing the place. Entrepreneur could be a little crazy. We're allowed to be, right? Because we have big vision and we're charismatic and we're leaders. And the type of leader I am, and you got, I was thinking about this the other day, different types of leaders. Leader could be somebody that, and I know this is kind of an aside. A leader could be someone who just goes first. Leader doesn't have to be the person that leads, meaning manages. I don't manage anybody. I don't want in my business, I don't want to marry, I don't want to lead anybody that way, meaning like, come along, here we go, let's do this. No, I just jump and everybody follows. That's the kind of leader I am, right? So you got to understand what kind of lead you, leader you are, right? My whole, even my family, everything in my family is like, where's daddy jumping next? But daddy's over here. Okay, well, I guess we're going to be doing this, right? And my wife organizes it. Like right now, for example, I reverted to Catholicism, right? Over the past two years, I'm learning about my faith again. I was baptized as a child. So was my wife. We both were confirmed, but I didn't think anything of it, right? I was too busy in the new age, new agey, right? I was all into other stuff, right? And my family was into that too when I was. I converted. They didn't jump right away. I didn't expect them to. I know myself and I know them so much so now that if daddy jumps, it takes a little while for things to, even just, even my whole life is this way. I was looking at, I'm talking about myself now, an aside. I was looking at this channel, this very YouTube channel, my Elliot Hell's channel. If you look at the very first like 20 videos on this channel, they're all 30 seconds to a minute videos. Why? Because I go first. I was making TikToks before TikTok. I was laughing at this the other day because some young man hit me up. And he was like, Elliot, I noticed you don't make short form content. You're not into TikTok. I was like, listen, bro. And he was trying to teach me how to make TikTok. I was like, listen, bro, I know how to make short form content. The only problem is I did it 10 years ago before there was a TikTok. I'm usually ahead of my time. I'm a leader. I go first. Sometimes going first means you're alone. <laughs> anyway, let me come back to you. How much energy should I put into enforcing the rules that only I believe in? You don't put any energy into enforcing the rules. You get them to believe in it. Pow! Do you see that? You don't do the enforcing. Mom does that. The commander does that. The manager does that. You get them to believe in the vision. You get that? Hope that helps. Done. Yo, it's your bro Elliot. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, you ought to know that it was a clip from one of my most recent King Transformation classes with my students where, among other things, we get together about four or five hours a week and we speak on things as it relates to becoming kings in our lives and fitness, business, and with women. If that sounds like you and you want to join a like-minded group of men who are growing stronger every day in every way in this degenerate age, then it's real simple. Just follow me on Instagram and then DM me the word King, K-I-N-G, and then me and my team will get back to the details to see if you qualify. I really hope to see you at the next meeting. Done.